Hello there, I'm Steve from Mac84, and welcome to another video. Today we're going to continue our look at the Vintage Computer Federation swap meet that took place on April 24th, 2021. So this video is part two. If you missed part one, click on the little button over here or check out the link in the video description. That'll make sure you're caught up before you continue with this part. In this part of the video, we're going to continue to look at the things that I picked up from the VCF swap meet. So let's take a look. The VCF swap meet was a lot of fun and I got to meet some great people there. I really enjoyed being out of the house in the nice weather and seeing all of the vintage computers and electronics for sale. The deal of the day must have been this massive CRT television in which they were paying you $5 to take it away. And of course, there's a lovely 400 megahertz Celeron eMachines tower, which will never be obsolete. All right, now let's continue with what I picked up at the swap meet. Okay, so first up is a lovely Macintosh 2CI system. And although I already have the desktop I did not have this particular monitor, and that's what really attracted me to this bundle because the Macintosh 2 CI is a machine I have already, it's a great machine, don't get me wrong, but this monitor was something that goes with the Macintosh LC. So this was sold with the Macintosh LC systems, and so it fits perfectly under a Macintosh LC system. You can see it doesn't really line up as well with the 2 CI. However, the guy was selling this as a bundle deal. Now, Unfortunately, I did not check the back of the monitor because if I did that before purchasing it, I would have noticed it is not what I thought it was. So this is actually a monochrome display. It is not the color monitor I thought it was. So I was a bit disappointed. Thankfully, I did figure that out as I was hauling this thing away. Um, and I did talk to the guy and you know we came to sort of an agreement. So he gave me a partial discount on something else that I'll show you in a moment. But this wasn't too bad. Um, this was $95. It was a little over what I probably wanted to pay for it, but I really wanted that monitor. So unfortunately I went for it and yeah, then I figured out it was a monochrome display. The Macintosh 2 CI is actually in pretty good shape. Unfortunately, he said it does not chime and I looked at the caps and they looked a little leaky. So I think that's something I'll be able to handle. So I don't think that'll be too much of a problem. He did include a keyboard, which is in questionable shape, but um, he did say it worked. It's a little grimy, but the other cool thing that he did include was this. This is a lovely Connor tape drive, and it's a SCSI tape drive, and it has a very similar design language uh, to the Macintosh 2 CI, so that's pretty cool. Uh, apparently a 2 gigabyte DAT model, and has a tape here too, so that's neat. Um, he also included a SCSI cable that's in the box behind me. I've not really played around with tape systems much, so it's going to be fun to play around with this and see if we can get this working. Now, there is um, no hard drive inside of this model, but he did include a hard drive that I could put in. Uh, it is missing the Molex connector, or whatever you want to call that, for the power uh, inside. It's that uh, square four pin to the traditional uh, power four pin cable that you see in most PCs. Uh, but he did include this. this is a one gigabyte quantum SCSI drive. So hopefully that'll work and included a SCSI cable for that as well. So all in all, not too much of a bad price. Uh, I am quite excited for the 2CI to see if I can get it up and running uh, because it is in pretty good shape. And it actually also has the feet on the bottom. So you could actually stand this up sort of like a Quadra 700 on its side. I've never had one that had the original feet intact. So that's pretty cool. Here we have two Apple color composite monitors. Uh, these were sold to me as a pair from the same person who sold me the Macintosh 2 CI. Uh, he offered these to me as a pair for a pretty good price. Uh, unfortunately, they are not the best cosmetically. Uh, this one, as you may be able to tell, is very yellowed in some areas here. Um, and there's some grime from old tape and labels and stuff like that. This one has some cracked plastic. Uh, the bottom panel here is completely broken off, but the panel is still there. Uh, this one is missing that little panel that hides the controls. And there are some plastic pieces that have cracked on this that are uh, taped onto the top there. So these will require some restoration. However, 
Um, I did not have any of these monitors. I want to try and fix them up. Maybe uh, Mike could use one uh, for his Apple II to play around with for a while. And uh, you really don't see these monitors around anymore. I do have a newer one that works with the uh, Apple IIs. I think it was designed to match the Apple IIe Platinum. You may have seen that I used it in my clones video. But these hopefully will clean up well. Apparently they work fine. So they're, they're good to have, and uh, yeah, may not be much to look at, but always nice to have another Apple monitor. All right, next up we have another Apple monitor. This is an Apple Multiple Scan 15 AV display. I've never had one of these before. Uh, it has speakers built in, so that's what gives it the A in AV. That's the audio. Uh, there's a little scratch on here. Doesn't look too bad. Um, I did pick up two of these. Uh, the individual did not know uh, if both of them worked. Uh, however, it wasn't a bad price uh, for both of them, so I decided to take the gamble on that. And uh, so you have your standard DB15 connector that is on these old Apple monitors. Uh, there is an audio input jack in the rear, and there's a headphone jack here. So if you didn't want to use the speakers built into the monitor, you could use headphones. But it looks to be in pretty good shape. Um, the plastic is surprisingly intact. These are just some of the things that would get destroyed if you shipped it. And so very happy to have this. I have not tested this yet, but apparently uh, one of the pair should work. So fingers crossed. Now myself and the seller actually thought that this monitor could only go up to like 800 by 600, which was fine with me because anything higher than 640 by 480 in an Apple monitor is a win for me. However, by looking up the specs when I came home, I realized it's actually a 1024 by 768 capable monitor. So that's not bad at all. I'm very happy with the capabilities that I thought this monitor did not have. So that was a good pickup. Okay, so next up is something my friend Mike from Mike's Mac Shack found. And I bought it so we could try and fix it up one day. Unfortunately, the case was long gone. The individual no longer had the case. It was rusted through. But he had the front of that, so we have the front case and the motherboard. So these are parts from an IBM PS2 Model 80. And it included this lovely turbo motherboard upgrade made by Reply, who was an IBM business partner. It has a socket 2 processor slot there. We have eight memory slots here. We have a bunch of uh, what I believe micro channel and some other cards there and some ports here. And we have this huge power supply here. So you can see the connector on the back and this chunky connector on the front here and uh, yeah it's a little handle <laughs> but on the front here I believe yeah this is the uh, the on off switch and we have the little LEDs there and of course that would poke through uh, this part of the case if I could just align it sort of for for demonstration purposes here there we go just like that so this, this would have been a long tower that would stand up like this. And yeah, we don't have the whole case there, but the idea is maybe we can see if we can get this to work. So this would be something cool to play around with. Uh, we do have onboard IDE, so that will make things a little bit easier. But yeah, this is exciting to play around with. This was, uh, I think, 5 or $10 for all of these things. Uh, the individual who had these for sale was very kind and, and very open about you know, uh, what he thought about and everything. So good pickup. Uh, this will be fun to, to try and restore. Next up, I have this lovely home theater PC case. I can just think of all sorts of projects I could use this for. Maybe I could put an old Mac in there or something. I don't know. I think it'll be a lot of fun. But it's really cool because it's supposed to fit in your AV cabinet where you would have your stereo receiver, your Blu-ray player, etc. And it has a little flap down door here and you have access to a optical drive. There's a DVD RW drive in there. We have a full uh, set of ports here. We have some USB ports, audio in and out. We have a SD card slot. We have a Sony memory stick card slot. We have a compact flash card slot. And then there's a small cutout here for like a floppy drive or something else probably. But I just think this was really cool. It's pretty slick looking. We have a power button and a reset button. This was only $10. I picked it up when we got the IBM motherboard and the other pieces from that guy. He also had a very cool image writer that looked like it was in good shape. He didn't want much for it at all. He was just trying to give it a good home. 
but I already had six of those image riders, so, so I wasn't really planning on picking up another one. And we have some of those half-height expansion cord cutouts. We have a section for a power supply, and I guess the motherboard I.O. there. So this would, you know, fit, uh, what is it, a mini ITX, ATX? Y you know what I mean. But we have all sorts of headers in there. So the case is in pretty good shape. There's just a few scuffs on the top, but really, uh, I don't really mind. Especially if this is actually going to be in an AV rack. Those usually would not show you'd have some stuff stacked on top of it. But again, I think this case is pretty attractive. Um, I do like the form factor of it. Even if it's not used in a home theater situation, I think it's pretty slick. You could put a monitor on top, etc. So I think this was a cool find. Here we have a bunch of hard drives. These hard drives were listed as a dollar each. So I asked the individual, how much for the whole box? These are lovely hard drives. Uh, a few of the, the more redundant ones of the stack are these 4.3 gigabyte fast SCSI 2 drives. These are Western Digital Enterprise WDE 4360 SCSI hard drives. They have your standard 50 pin connector on the bottom here. And so these will be great for a Macintosh or a Power Macintosh machine. Fantastic. Uh, I counted the amount of drives here, so I paid $20 for everything that was in the box and some of them that were sticking around outside of the box. And I think there are a little over 20 drives here, so I didn't make out too badly. And they said they worked, so hopefully they do. Even if half of them work, hey, that's not a bad deal. Some of the drives are IDE, which, you know, eh. But uh, it never hurts to have, I guess, some spare hard drives here. Some of them are a little smaller than 4 gigs, some of them are a little larger. But although these hard drives probably don't have too much life left in them, they are good for popping in a machine, putting a OS on, and just testing them out. After all, I don't have enough SCSI 2SD adapters for all of my old computers, so it's always good to have some SCSI hard drives. This lovely thing is a Nikon CoolScan 35mm color film scanner. And as you can see from the price on the front, $5 could not say no to that. And this thing is fantastic. It has the box and it's practically brand new. This is an external unit and it is Macintosh compatible. Now I do have a few of these. I have one that I picked up from Japan and I have one that I've had for a while. But I never had any of the adapters required to put film into that particular slot. And I never had the proper software. Thankfully, this set appears to be complete. So let's take a quick look inside. We have our film strip holder for 35mm film. Fantastic. We have a slide holder. Or maybe this is another film holder. Not entirely sure. I'm going to have to check that out. But we have all the books. This looks like there's a few guides for Windows, so maybe uh, you know things were mixed in here. But we have a SCSI Terminator with a pass-through. It looks like we have a few different SCSI cable. Well, the different SCSI cable here. Wow, look at that. Uh, there's a power cable there. Uh, we do have some other things here. Okay, dear imaging enthusiasts, that's always a nice way to address someone. Uh, do, 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 do. Very, very cool. Groundbreaking LED illumination technology. Very cool. And what is this? We have a registration card. Yes. Okay, cool. Always nice to have some documentation here. Let me pull this tray out. And here is the device itself. I don't think it's ever been opened. Look at that. Fantastic. So I will definitely be playing around with this at some point. We do have some pieces of documentation right over there. Open B first. Oh, packing list. Let's see if it came with everything needed. The film strip holder, the AC cord, external SCSI cable, SCSI terminator, SCSI controller card. Okay, it doesn't have that, but I don't need that. Okay, so this was actually for Windows, although the box had the Mac check mark checked off. That's okay. I'm sure the Mac software shouldn't be too hard to find. It's very, very cool. I look forward to playing around with this. And I'm very curious to see how this compares to the other one I have. I don't know if they are similar models or anything like that. I know the resolution changed 
depending on which model you purchased. So that is very cool for $5. I think that's well worth it. Next up is a great little zip drive. This is an iOmega 250 megabyte zip drive. And it's not a SCSI one, but it is a parallel version. So I could use this on PCs, which is pretty cool, but I mostly picked it up because of its form factor. I always had the USB versions of these drives, which unfortunately I have not always found to be too reliable, but I never really had one that was as external and chunky as this one. And this really looks to me like the older style of the iOmega Zip 100 drives. Of course, the design is slightly different, but I thought this was pretty neat. So I thought, you know what, for a few dollars, let me pick this up. It never hurts to have another zip drive in the family, especially if you have a lot of Macs and PCs and you want to be able to exchange files between one and another. And it came with all the cords needed, so perfect. This is a Pegasus R6 from Promise Technology Incorporated. This is a Thunderbolt hard drive RAID enclosure. So we have two Thunderbolt ports here. I think there's a serial port for communication. You have a spot for six hard drives here, so that's very nice. Uh, there is one sled missing, but there's not too much going on here. There's no electronics in the back. You just have some clear LED guides to guide the display lights here for the activity of the discs, but there's just SATA connectors in the back. So I'm sure with some careful MacGyvering or some 3D printing, we could get another disc in there. Very, very cool. Um, always nice to have fast I.O., so you can't get much faster than Thunderbolt. I know these things were really expensive when they came out, so that's really cool. And I'll be sure to get good use out of this thing. So these are OWC Mercury RAID enclosures. They can hold up to four hard drives, and they have a, a variety of ports on the back. So these two have eSATA, FireWire 400, FireWire 800, and USB 2.0. So these could hold up to four hard drives each, which is really cool. So they'll allow me to expand some of the storage of some of the Macs I have. I could even plug them into one of my X serves and get some external storage going there. So very nice. These were only $10 each. They do not have any hard drives in them, but still I think that's quite a price for an enclosure that can hold multiple hard drives, which gives you USB and FireWire connectivity. This is a two bay, three terabyte hard drive enclosure. It has a USB 3.0 port on the back and an eSATA port. So this was also a great pickup. So big thanks to Rick for a great deal on these hard drive enclosures and accessories. And then I came across this display. Here is a pair of Apple Studio Display 17 inch models. These are the ones that require a Macintosh with the ADC connector or you could have an ADC to DVI adapter if you have one of those that's still around and still working. These were the last CRTs that Apple made. These were introduced in the summer of 2000 and were discontinued that next spring. These sold for about $500 back in the day and they were the, one of the cheapest monitors that Apple had offered because the other monitors that they had were LCDs. I always wanted one of these monitors. They were on display at Nobody Beats the Wiz here in New Jersey when they were going out of business. And the monitor was slightly discounted and I, I just wanted it so bad. Of course, I had no machine that would plug into it, but the design of these is just breathtaking. I love the clear back of it, uh, the flat front. Uh, it is like a flat screen CRT. It's one of the more beautiful CRTs I've ever seen. So this individual was not really at their table, so I initially texted them to find out the pricing, but I didn't hear back. So later on during the festival, towards the end, nobody had purchased these monitors. They were still sitting there, and I asked the guy what the pricing was, and he wanted you to buy the monitor plus a computer. And so the idea was you would have to buy the monitor and you would get the computer that was below. He had two G4 towers. One was a gigabit ethernet uh, graphite G4 and then he had a Quicksilver G4. The graphite machine apparently had some power supply issues uh, but the Quicksilver apparently worked okay. So it was a bit of a wash. He wanted $75 with the computer so that would be for both items the display and the computer. And seeing both of these monitors each of them were in pretty good condition and I was not about to pass up a chance to get one because Whenever I see them listed, they are over $100, which is, in my opinion, way too much just for the monitor. And unfortunately, if you ship them, they'll likely be severely damaged. So I asked if he would take $140 for both displays and both computers. And he mulled it over for a second and realized probably that nobody 
else uh, <laughs> wanted these things because it was the end of the day and he probably didn't want to take them home. And he agreed. So thank you, Douglas, for that deal on these monitors and the computer. I guarantee you they'll go to a good home. We'll see if we could fix up that G4 tower. Uh, I think these displays are excellent, um, especially the back of them. Just look at that. You have a beautiful clear case that just surrounds the CRT. We do have the same fanless design as you know the IMAX, so there is uh, a concern with some of the dust collecting here. But I believe this panel is removable from the top, so we should be able to clean this thing out, hopefully. And it looks pretty good. I mean, there's really not too many scratches on it. Um, just a few scuffs here and there. But overall, it's in pretty good condition. Of course, we do have that ADC connector here. So you do need a compatible graphics card or one of those ADC to DVI adapters. But yeah, so I, I got both of these monitors and I'm very glad to have one looking as nice as this one in my collection. I didn't need those G4 towers, but I'm hoping that I could give one of those towers, or at least the parts of those, to Mike so he could fix up one of his Power Mac G4s that he's been having issues with. Probably set this up as a permanent monitor with one of my machines because these are just fantastic to use. Unfortunately, they are a bit deep, so uh, unlike your standard CRT where maybe about here would hit the wall, this one just keeps going. And I could see, you know, obviously, you could see why they had to make it so deep like that because of the internals in here. But yeah, that's uh, it doesn't leave uh, much room here. I have one of these on the shelves behind me. And yeah, there's, <laughs> it, it really limits what you can put around it. But very, very beautiful. I love the design of this thing. I've never had one in such good condition. And I'm very happy to have this in my collection. All right, so here is one of the G4 towers that came bundled with that monitor. Now this one, uh, he claims that the door is a bit hard to close. And I can see it, it, it's already protruding out this left side. Um, now this one apparently had some power supply issues. Apparently some magic blue smoke escaped at one point. But we do have a SCSI card in here. We have an ATI uh, Radeon graphics card. Not sure which one that is. Uh, let's see if we can look at the specs here. All right, so this is a dual processor, 450 megahertz model. And it originally came with two megabytes of cache and 256 megabytes of memory, 20 gigabyte hard drive, DVD drive, Radeon graphics, and gigabit ethernet. So very cool, does not have the modem, but who cares about that really? Not bad at all. So here is the other G4. This is a Quicksilver model. Let's see, somebody put an Apple logo on here. There used to be an ID tag there or something. This is nice, it has the zip bezel here. That might be a 250 megabyte zip drive in there. And you have your optical drive up top. Let's take a look at the specs of the machine. So this is an 800 megahertz model with 256 megabytes of memory when it shipped. Originally had a 40 gigabyte hard drive, a CD burner, a Radeon 7500, a zip drive, and a modem. And it is, of course, a gigabit ethernet model as well. And it has the port there for the Apple Pro speakers. So if you do have a set of speakers for the iMac or whatever, you could just plug those in just like the iMac G4 rather. Not a bad machine at all. Believe it or not, everything on this table right now was all free. So at the end of the day, a lot of things are just being given away for free. Basically anything on this tarp area that wasn't a computer, software, documentation, books, etc. It was all free. So I took a look through and found some goodies here and I'll be showing some of them off. One of the ones I want to show off first is this. This is Connectix Video Phone. You may know Connectix as the maker of Virtual PC. And yeah, so this is basically video conferencing software. This is particularly for Windows. But I found two of these sealed, sitting back to back. So I actually took one of these, and I took the other one, and I gave it to my friend Brian. And I'm hoping that Brian can do a video with me of tinkering around with these. I think that would be fun to do. Brian has an awesome YouTube channel, Brian's Computer Retreat. Highly recommend you check that out. Hopefully we could get this working. We could do some weird video conferencing type stuff on a Windows machine. So that'll be exciting. I don't know if we can still get it to work, but I think we're up for the challenge. So that was one piece of cool software. 
Definitely wouldn't have paid for it, but sealed in the box. Nice to have it for free. Another cool thing that I picked up was this. This is Symantec Antivirus for Macintosh version 2.0. In the box, I believe everything is in there. It feels quite hefty. I mean, just look at that. Fantastic. It's from 1990, I believe, or around then. And we have a number on the back there. And yeah, this, this is for your Mac. It helps you, you know, scan for viruses. It makes sure that you're protected and all that fun stuff. But very, very cool. Don't have this in the box, or I think at all. So very nice to add that to my software collection. And next, this is something I don't really see that often. This is Documents to Go. This basically allowed you to put Microsoft Office and compatible files like Clarisworks files or Corel files, etc., on your PDA. So this is Mac and Windows compatible, and basically you transfer this little application to your Palm Pilot, and then you could read very popular file formats of the day like Microsoft Doc files, etc. I always had the demo of this on my Palm Pilot when I was in school. So it's very cool to have the full version of this. I assume everything is in here, not for export. You better listen to that, James. And let's see what's inside, actually. Very curious. Okay. So we have this, which... Well, that's feeling pretty light. What do we got? We got a serial number there. Oh, yeah, there's a CD. Hey, how about that? So we have Documents to Go 2.0, and so this is compatible with Macintosh and Windows. Very, very cool. I did not have that at all. So very nice to find some Palm Pilot software. You, you really don't see that around too much. This was something I picked up. It was sealed. I don't really know if I'll have a use for it, but look at that. Power disk for faster, safer hard disks, and super PC quick disk accelerator. So. Yeah, from Multisoft. <laughs> these are IBM programs. I have no idea if these are of any use, but they're sealed. Uh, feels like there are discs in there. So, very, very cool. And this caught my eye. Music construction set. I think I've seen this uh, featured on a few YouTube videos. And I was curious uh, what machines it was compatible with. So we have our manual here which is nice and we have the floppy here and I just looked at this and it says it's compatible with Apple II computers so that's exactly why I picked this up we have the great uh, elephant memory systems logo there I love that and so yeah this will be fun to play around with I don't really have much box software or any commercial software for the Apple II uh, I mean I do have some of those shareware discs and stuff like that but very cool to find something like this with the, the case and everything. It looks pretty complete. So that was a cool find. Last but not least was this piece of styrofoam here. And yeah, let me show you what's inside here. We have a Laser Writer and Laser Writer Plus manual. Very interesting. The Apple logo on here is monochrome. It's not the filled in one. It's almost like they tried to print the color logo in black and white. And of course, that did not really translate well, but Anyway, here's the manual for the Laser Writer and the Laser Writer Plus. Seems to be in pretty good shape. Uh, I do not have this particular Laser Writer. I would love to. Uh, apparently they're hard to find and they're very heavy, but I think they're, that's really cool. We have a thing here from Adobe. I think, actually, I think I have something similar to this. I remember the little character here. Thank you for ordering our award-winning Adobe Type Manager software. Enclosed are your program disk, etc. Okay, so we have, wow, look at that old Adobe logo. That's cool. Uh, let's see. So none of the disks are in here, but it's a little pamphlet. That's pretty neat. I mean, it was free, so I'm not going to complain about that. But what I didn't notice in here, oh boy, is look at this. This is apparently a sealed version of HyperCard, which is fantastic. I've never had a sealed copy like this. Uh, notice, read license agreement before breaking this seal. So yeah, this is really cool. Um, I, I don't know if this was bundled with something. Uh, it's not in a, in, a, in a hard box or anything unless they just put everything in this styrofoam. I don't know if this was maybe for the laser writer and they just put it in there to you know bundle it together. Obviously, the Adobe stuff was shoved in here too, but 
Very cool. Very cool find. Always happy to find software and goodies hidden within, especially for the price of free. And then last but not least, I could not resist. A boxed in very good condition Apple Image Writer 2 dot matrix printer. As some of you may know, I have a soft spot for these printers, so let's take a look inside. I love the old Apple computer logo on here, the old shipping label there. And this is not new in the box, but it has a lot of the things that you would find if you had bought the machine new. I believe this was to hold some documentation, which is not in here, but I have plenty of those manuals. We do still have the limited warranty card, which is fantastic. If I mailed this into Apple, I wonder what they would say. Uh, or is this the... no, that's a typey mail-in. Never mind. Uh, but we do have the packing list here. So it originally came with the ImageWriter 2, the power cord, the manual, the fabric ribbon, and a warranty. But you'll notice something missing from this. And that is the cable. Well, how do you plug your printer into your Macintosh? Well, they would sell you this separately, and I have never had this particular cable new in box. So that is very, very cool. They used to call these peripheral cables, so we commonly refer to them as serial cables. Excellent find. It's in the box here, and I love the back of this because it shows you all the different systems and the number of the cables. So if you had to get a cable for this printer for your particular machine, whether it be a Macintosh Plus, a Macintosh, an Apple IIc, Apple IIe, Apple III, or Macintosh XL, or Lisa, oh, that's, that's priceless. Uh, it would tell you which of these cables that you had for your particular Macintosh. So let's open this up and see which cable is actually inside. Okay, yeah, just your, your regular serial cable. So we have the, the eight pins on each side. So we have that connector on both sides. I was curious if it was perhaps a Macintosh Plus cable because that is red in text on the box here, but I guess not. I was quite drawn to this just for the boxes, to be honest. I have too many of these printers. I don't need them, but oh my goodness. I'm a sucker for boxes sometimes. Sometimes, not all the time, but very, very pretty. Now let's see if I can manage to take this out. There is some styrofoam here. A few things here. First off, if I can lift this slightly. Now this page was included with the Image Writer 2. And this is a print sample, and I've, I've actually have a few of these in my collection, and the number up there is very interesting to see. So this is 0446002, and this is a print sample of all the characters, and then you got some color on the bottom too, to just show you what your printer is capable of. And not bad for a dot matrix at all. That is, quite frankly, beautiful. Okay, so we do have, uh, what else is in here? Actually, I, I did not look at the bottom of the box. This is a power cable, I guess? Yeah. Look at that, an Apple cable. I don't think I had the original one that ever came with this printer, so that's cool. Yeah, it has the L shape there. I always end up with the earlier revisions of these because the later revision actually had a different power supply in it made the machine much lighter, and you could tell that by the location of the power and serial ports on the machine. But I always end up uh, with the other type, you know, and all of mine are the same. Uh, I should have checked the other two that were at the swap meet. I bet the ones I did not look at closely were the ones I didn't have, but it's the same printer, essentially. Oh, this is something else. What, what is this? It's too small to be a, a ribbon. <laughs> okay. So this is for the Apple StyleWriter inkjet printer for a StyleWriter, StyleWriter 2 portable StyleWriter, StyleWriter 1200 and StyleWriter Color, oh, and Color StyleWriter 1500. Okay, I bet this is all dried up, but it's sealed uh, to look to the looks of it. Okay, well, that's a nice little bonus there. So let's see if we could take this thing out of here. Uh, my apologies if the camera wiggles or if you hear any weird noises. All right, so we have a dust jacket that is perfectly made for this printer. I mean, look at that. Now it is a little sticky to it. It's sticking a little bit to it. So this just might need a, a quick clean, but oh my goodness. A little yellowing there, a little bit, but 
Actually, this is different from the rest of the ones I have. This doesn't say Image Writer on it. I don't have one that does not have the Image Writer writing there. So this is probably a very early unit. Very cool. Let's see how everything is. All right, so we have a, a black ribbon in there. Seems to be okay. I don't see any expansion cards. It's hard to tell without taking this apart. Don't see any expansion cards, but I do have quite a few. I do have a memory module and the local talk card. So I could put that in if I wanted to, but oh man, I'm happy I picked this up. Yeah, actually, now that I think of it, this actually is a different color. Oh my goodness, yes. This is a completely different color. This is to match the Apple IIc and those series of machines. The rest of the ones I have are platinum. Oh my goodness, I'm just realizing it now. That's why it looks so different. Oh man, I'm so glad I grabbed this now. That's right, because the other box unit I have actually has a sticker that says platinum on it. So yeah, this, this was an, an earlier one, or I guess it was just designed to match the Apple products of the day, but... I guess when they went to platinum, they uh, they changed the colors. But yeah, let's take a look around the unit here. There's some light yellowing. I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, wow, yeah, all the all the the plastics seem to be in exceptional shape. Uh, I'm going to carefully flip this over so we can get a shot of the yeah. So there's some yellowing there, but that's okay. And of course. Let's turn this around and see if we can get a look at the serial number there, 04460002. Okay, great. So that confirms that this paper matches the serial number of the actual printer. I always wondered that. Okay. That is really, really cool. I mean, the guy wanted $25 for it, but it was towards the end of the day. I offered him $20, and he said sold. I'm pretty sure... It would have been available for free afterwards if nobody wanted it because everything in that area was marked free basically afterwards, but you know, 20 bucks I think is well spent, especially because it's a particular revision I don't currently have, so very cool. Wow, <laughs> that stuff was awesome. I was so excited to find some of these things. The Power CD base station and the remote control, those were just fantastic finds. The hard drives and the external disk enclosures are fantastic. I could definitely use those. And those ADC monitors and that boxed image writer, that very early image writer too. Oh, that was fantastic. I was so excited to find those things. I know I need another image writer too, like I need a hole in the head. But this is an earlier revision than one of the ones I have. So I'm only missing the last revision, which moves the ports from the legs to the middle of the unit. And it's in pristine condition. It looks really, really nice. And it's actually not the platinum color, it's the cream color like the Apple IIc. So I think that's really cool and I'm very happy to pick that up. And I'm sure you'll be seeing that more in another video. In fact, you're going to see a lot of the stuff that I picked up in future live streams and future videos as I start tinkering around with these things. So stay tuned for that. And a big thanks for my friend Mike from Mike's Mac Shack. He picked up this card for me at the swap meet. Thank you very much, Mike. This is very cool. It's an Ethernet card that you could use on old PCs or Macs, maybe, if the drivers will work for it. But this is cool because a lot of the times you'll find these cards, but you won't find the adapter or vice versa. So it's nice to have a complete set. Now, what's really neat about this one is it has both styles of Ethernet that were popular in the mid-1990s. Companies didn't know which Ethernet format was going to win out, so they often supported both of them. So this has both, which will be really cool to play around with. So thank you very much, Mike, for that donation. I greatly appreciate you picking that up. Again, big shout-outs to my friends Mike, Brian, and Sean. You can find links to their videos and their YouTube channels in the description below. Please check those out. They have excellent content, so don't deprive yourself from more geeky YouTube fun. Just go on a binge-watching spree. It's going to be a lot of fun. But that's about it for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this sort of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. I have some great videos coming out soon. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up and make sure you hit that little bell icon if you subscribe to the channel. That'll make sure you get notified when I release another video. If you want to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, the handle is Mac84TV. And if you want to follow me on Patreon and support me there, for as little as a dollar a month, you can subscribe and support the channel. 
you get behind the scenes access to stuff that you can't get anywhere else, and previews of videos before they go live. So please consider that, I would greatly appreciate your support. But that's it for now, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you right here next time on Mac84.